Hello, Parsboro Community Radio listeners. Welcome to Exploring the Neighborhood with your hosts, Thor and Debbie, here on CICR 99.1 on your FM dial. We'd like to thank Kanza as the sponsor for our show. For those of you who are not aware, Kanza is Cumberland County's only Careers Nova Scotia Center and a vital participant in this area's road to prosperity. This year, Kanza is celebrating 15 years of serving the area and providing valuable employment and educational opportunities. Our goal for Exploring the Neighborhood is to take you on a series of half-hour adventures that include road trips, candid interviews, and commentaries. We'll focus on the area's homegrown businesses, unique landmarks, and emerging talent. We're hoping to shine a well-deserved light on the local endeavors that promote eco-friendliness and self-sufficiency. We are back for another exciting episode of Exploring the Neighborhood. We have visitors from out of town, and they ran around Cumberland County. We would have gone to more places, but we had limited time, and we tried to do as much in Cumberland County as we could. First of all, please introduce yourself. Who are you? My name is Vanessa Lenges, and I am Thor's daughter. Hello, my name is Jamie Copeland, and I am Vanessa's fiance. You're like my kids. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and what the heck have you done in life, daughter of mine? I grew up in Montreal, Canada, as Thor's daughter. That's my first title, and then my secondary work title has been actress, and I've acted on many different projects from the age of seven till current day, which is 30 years old. Jamie, what the heck do you do? Grew up in Vancouver, British Columbia, and I've kind of just fell into underwater welding. And that's what I've been doing for the past few years. Welding stuff underwater. But you don't do it in your bathroom. No, no, no. Where have you been doing it? Southeast Asia, Thailand, Indonesia, Bali. You were just talking about Mexico. I was just out in Mexico, yeah, the Gulf of Mexico. You were talking about training in South Africa. Oh, yeah, I did my school in South Africa. Did my second part of my school in Marseille, France. So I did that in December. That was really fun. Jamie and I actually met in Thailand. So we're quite global. It's a global love affair. You were just telling me you were in Ireland. Yes, I've been to Ireland. (laughs) I noticed how green... Ireland was so many different greens. And what does it remind you of? Ireland reminds me of the Maritimes. Is this your first time to the Maritimes? No, this isn't my first time to the Maritimes. My father, Thor, and I have been to Newfoundland for a show I did way back in the 90s called Popular Mechanics for Kids, which was for YTV. And what did we do in Newfoundland? We went cod fishing and Uh, we caught a bunch of cod. And what else did we do that was even more crazy? We went humpback whale testing. We tested them. There were harpoons, which didn't hurt the humpback whales, but we harpooned them to get a sample of their blubber to test them for migration patterns and health. It was quite incredible. I remember being on a tiny little dinghy while the humpback whales were swimming under me, and it was majestic. Except for the magic moment where we transferred plane in Halifax, you've never really been to Nova Scotia. This is my first trip to Nova Scotia. And your first time, both of you, in Cumberland County, correct? First time. You've been here now a couple of days. What have you done? Well, our plane landed in Halifax, and our beautiful Thor and Deb picked us up at a terrible hour in the morning. I don't remember what time we arrived. 1.30 in the morning. Yeah, Uh 1.30 a.m. We drove to Spring Hill. That drive was Uh, just gorgeous in the pitch black. We got to Spring Hill. They had made a nice bed for us. We met the bunny, which is an adorable... Holland lop ear. A Holland lop ear. The next morning, we woke up in Spring Hill. The birthplace of Anne Murray. We walked by the museum. We heard some Anne Murray blasting. Yeah. 
You grooved to Anne Murray. Yeah, my mom loved Anne Murray. Loved, loved, loved. Hearing her music being out in the middle of the streets as we walked by, there's nobody really around. It seemed a little bit strange to me. Anne Murray's calling to me. My dad loves Anne Murray. He's a huge Anne Murray fan. What was the big song? It was a sleepy. What was the. I think her big hit is Snowbird, which is what my parents are. Snowbird. They are. Then we went to see the tidal bore. What the heck is a tidal bore? A tidal bore, I have learned, is when the current of the tide rising creates one wave that you can watch actually go up the bed of the river. And who told you about that? Wasn't it Bud? Bud. Yes. First we met Bud. We parked and Bud came out and gave us pamphlets and tidal bore time schedules. And he was a wealth of information. But we had to wait 20 minutes if we wanted to stay with Bud to watch the tidal bore. So we decided, no, we're going to chase it. Where did we drive to? River Bear Bridge. But everyone calls it River Hibbert. River Hibbert? Bud didn't think we could make it in time to uh, the next tidal bore spot, and we saw it right on time. And that's even with about 10 stops in between, taking in the sights on the way over. Right. The Folk uh, Art Museum, which was closed, And we maintained speed limit at all times. Yes, we were very Of course safe. we did. Yeah. <laughs> but we got to see it. We saw the tidal bore. I think everybody's first time. Everyone's you hadn't first seen time. it? Never seen it. In a year living that. here? No, it wasn't a tsunami, but... <laughs> Don't be fooled. Was- it was pretty good. Although the, the area that we were at doesn't have quite as powerful as downstream where we were before, so it would have been a lot bigger if we were down where Bud was. Yep. Exactly. He knew where to go. That's the spot. Yeah. And yes. then we made our way to Joggins, where Deb and Thor surprised Jamie and I by showing us their new property. Beautiful six acres. Our it's farm of the future. Farm of the future. Was it only six? I thought it was ten. Six and a half. Six and a half. But we have thousands of acres behind us. So you potentially could just sneak in there and, and do what you will. We could literally walk all the way back somewhere to Advocate or someplace and all in the woods. It would be amazing. So we saw your new property in Joggins, which was awesome. And we were going to help you finagle a stove into place, but we wanted to get some strength and energy in our body. So we went to Margie's restaurant and we had lobster rolls, lobster rolls and fish and chips. And the fish and chips were amazing. You ate both my lobster rolls, James. Yeah, I ate a lobster roll and three pieces of fish and all the fries. It was delicious. And I liked that Marjorie's, uh, Margie's, 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 sorry, pardon me. Margie's had a mantle with all the pictures of her family on it. You don't go to a restaurant in California and see a mantle with family pictures on it. What do you see? Movie stars. Yeah, it's movie stars. That's movie yeah. posters and movie stars. Yeah, doesn't matter not, where you it's go. It's not. It's not it, homey. Signed autograph pictures. Right. Of yeah. Somebody. Yeah. Somebody that the people don't know. So after Margie's, what did we do? Then we went yeah, and moved that stove. Mm-hmm. Remember? Yeah. And then we went for a oh, walk on the trail. Oh, we tried to go to Fossil Cliffs. We tried because that was really close to. It just closed. It had just. It was like we missed it. Did we go? We went from Margie's to the fossil. And then I was like, we should do a geocache here. What is that? Geocache is a worldwide It's a worldwide scavenger hunt. Yeah, a a worldwide scavenger hunt, right. And you can go online and if you just go to geocache.com or if you have an iPhone or smartphone, I'm sure there's a geocache app and you can see where people all over the world are playing a scavenger hunt with each other and they hide things and it's everyone's job to find them and you need a, a GPS locator or your phone and... All over the world, you can find different geocaches, and it's really fun. Yeah. And we don't work for geocache. No, We're we not really just don't. This, we just enjoy that good time. that lifestyle. We're geocachers, if you will. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a few people around here, apparently, that do it as well. I've heard of it. I just haven't done it myself. Were you surprised how many people had signed that piece of paper when we found it at the Fossil Cliffs in Joggins? Yeah, and I was actually surprised how many times you made me stop everywhere and <laughs> go to find things like that. I was actually surprised at how many there actually are here. I was, was quite a bit. Surprised how many times you actually stop for me because getting a dad to stop for you is a lot harder than anyone would imagine. And then you took us to Parsboro. 
to dump you off, right? Yeah, because you guys were gonna be working the next day and you had to get up really early, so you suggested that we stay at the Gillespie House Inn? First, we went to the Black Rock Restaurant. Bistro. Bistro, Black Rock Bistro, yeah. Where we were drinking the Tidal Bay wine. Oh, Is that what it's? Tidal Bay? Tidal Bay, yeah. Just the stuff. Joast, I believe. A local Just. one. Just. Yost. If uh, we're pronouncing it wrong, please forgive us. Jamie and I were actually drinking Oh no, we were Dark and Stormies. Which was delicious. Which was a rum a Nova Scotian rum. And that Fantastic. ginger beer was amazing. It was almost spicy. The end of it would like burn your mouth. It was delicious. We ate them out of scallops. Yeah. yeah. And then the next day we still didn't get any lobster. We saved it until today. Near the end, yeah. yeah, but yeah. we'll get to that. What was the name of the inn? The Gillespie House Inn. Beautiful That's, place to stay. And so, you, so you nice. We stayed at the Gillespie Room, wasn't it? We stayed in the Gillespie Room and we had a very romantic night. This you is a family we show. By the way, I'm 30. I'm allowed to say that I had a romantic <laughs> night with my fiance in the Gillespie this, House this Inn. This is a family show. In the Gillespie show. Room. It was okay. amazing. While you were having this romantic evening, Debbie and I were working in Amherst for the Kansas people and we heard a very wonderful presentation by Robert Wright, who is very involved with the mental health issues at the workplace. Yep. That was quite informative, too. He came up from Halifax. And there were a lot of people there. Good turnout. And once we were done, we transferred the tapes quickly, and then we rushed back to Parsboro to see if our young ones were getting into trouble. And we were. And they were. <laughs> no, we, we took Parsboro by storm. <laughs> <laughs> no, we saw the Glue's Cap statue, which we loved, and we did a bunch of selfies with. I was a little disappointed with how late we woke up in the day, though, because we wanted we to get up at We missed the eight. breakfast at the bed and breakfast. David oh, and Lori, his wife, Lori, Lori, Lori who is Lynch. absolutely amazing. Such a nice she lady. She's a sweetheart, but we missed breakfast. We missed breakfast. It was East Coast time, so 11.30 when we woke up was actually 8.30. True. Which is a normal time for two people early. to get up. And Timmy's always serves breakfast. And we spent tons of time at <laughs> We went to Tim Hortons for about three hours. I ate about <laughs> four breakfast sandwiches, a giant coffee. It was, it was wonderful. I had to explain to the Tim yeah. Hortons checkout lady that I didn't want sugar in my iced black coffee. Yeah. I'm such a snob. Yeah, you are. Paris bro was like, Diva. who's this snob? You ended up hitting an antique shop, I heard? The salt and pepper shop. I think it was the Fundy Bay Antiques and Collectibles, but really she had so many antique salt and pepper shakers. I was blown away. That's all I could talk about while we were there. Jamie rehearsed his new script from when he goes antiquing with me, which is... Oh my God, I just can't handle this. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want him to say. Oh, it's so, true. so did you buy anything? I bought lobster salt and pepper shakers. I bought a light up street lamp salt and pepper shaker holder and two sunflower salt and pepper shaker holder so yes three salt and pepper shaker holders and a black panther earring <laughs> it's pretty hard for you to say salt and pepper shaker it's hard it's a difficult yeah, one. it's difficult but we didn't pick you up from there did we jamie and i wanted to take a romantic stroll through the fundy geological museum a romantic everything's romantic <laughs> when you're not around thor <laughs> yes as soon as dad's out of the picture looking at dinosaur bones is so romantic i'm surprised they let you in <sighs> well, i hope you learned something we did we learned a lot we did one thing that you learned is well i looked at the spectrum of time over the past i can't remember how many million years it was and how the earth has changed over time and they have basically this little scale that you can spin and it goes through the different years and how all the different uh, land masses have changed around the world. It was super interesting. I'd never seen it before. Something about Nova Scotia being Morocco. attached to Morocco. Is that true? That's what Tim says. Who's Tim? He's the curator at the museum. Well, He's who we were supposed to ask for when we went in. Tim wasn't there that day. No, he wasn't. That's the story. As we were checking out of the Fundy Geological Museum, I was buying my dad a sweatshirt. And the next guests at the museum were this other couple who were coming in from Maine, I believe. And they had met us when we were trying to see the title bore. She had offered me a walnut loaf that she had in her van because I was experiencing low blood sugar. And it was just a nice small town run in. I felt really a part of this small town environment to be able to run into somebody I had just run into yeah. the day before. 
It's like coming from LA though or Vancouver. You just never accept that walnut loaf from some stranger from <laughs> a van. You just never do it. Around here, you grab it because they're all delicious. Oh yeah, well, that was our first mistake. Our first mistake was not accepting the the walnut loaf from the stranger that we met at the Tidal Bore. So if you could go back in site. time and you could do one thing differently, you would accept the walnut one, loaf. Life would be different. We might not be doing this interview. Then we went to Harborview Restaurant? Question mark. What's it called? We were at Harbor View Restaurant looking at the lighthouse, sitting in chairs. Oversized chairs. Then we went into the restaurant. And we asked them if they had lobster. And they said yes. And we ordered it. And we had more Tidal Bay wine. Margie did have lobster. She had two lobster rolls for us. We got a little taste of it, but it was the end. It was the end of her lobster, so here right. we actually got to feast. I think that you and Dad actually picked your lobster out of the tank. You got to choose. No, that didn't happen. It didn't? No. You didn't see the critter? Well, I took a picture of it. He made the girl hold it up and he took a picture. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. was it, gentlemen? It was delicious. It was very, very good. Oh, wait a second. We got you had clam chowder. chowder. We had the chowder and you and Vanessa really enjoyed it. I enjoyed my poutine. Oh yeah, you had poutine too. The atmosphere was good. Gorgeous. We got to have a view of the lighthouse. The service was excellent. And the two bottles of Tidal Bay. Thor didn't have any because he was driving. So the three of us just drank all of it. Yes, he's our designated driver. Yeah, he's been very nice this entire weekend. So after a few bottles of Tidal Bay, we managed to drag ourselves out of the restaurant and back to Spring Hill, where we ate again. This whole trip seems to be about food, which I don't mind. Yeah, food and wine. It's pretty much what a vacation is supposed to be. Exactly. I would just like to say that we're very conscious about what we eat. And so a big part of why we were so interested in having seafood while we've been in Nova Scotia is because it's local and fresh and organic. And you shared with us that you had a local beef farmer as well, right, Dad? Lyndon Lee. We get our meat from Frank. Living in California, it is very hard to know where your meat comes from. We eat a lot of vegetarian meals because of it. So we were really ecstatic that you have a local grass-fed beef farmer. Yeah, it was great. We had some grass-fed beef from Lyndon Lee, our friend Frank, and then we had some... Fiddleheads, which I've never seen before in my entire life. They're a local kind of vegetable that a lot of people use around here, and they were absolutely delicious. I've never heard of fiddleheads before. Did you enjoy them? They were delicious. Kind of like asparagus? Kind of like asparagus. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Spinachy. I don't know. Asparagus. Yeah. Spinach. Yeah. Yeah. A mix of different greens. Yeah. We also had some local beer that night. <gasps> That's Bre- right. That's a great Thor, point. Which I have to say, one of the secrets is the hops, which are also grown locally and organically. How cool. It was amazing. It was delicious beer. Room temperature too, so. I'm glad you liked it. We got out of Spring Hill after that. Well, we slept in, which Jamie and I are inclined to sleep in, apparently. And then you guys took us to the Gloose Cap family restaurant, which was amazing. We had a little gambling room, which I like. And I had some poutine again. I loved it. Every bite. So oh, the two poutines not, that I've had so far. Really a maritime thing. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I just something about me, this trip and poutine, I've just been drawn to it. And both these poutines at this point were You're fantastic. eating it nonstop in Vancouver too. When we lived in Vancouver, nonstop poutine. Every time I talked to her when I was at work, what are you eating? Poutine. Mm-hmm. Every single meal. Obviously, I just like poutine, which makes me a connoisseur of sorts. And I've liked both the poutines I've had so far. But we had flounder too. Yeah, you guys yeah. did. Flounder was good. Yeah, caught locally. That oh, was delicious. That was really good. Never had it before. It was fantastic. And they had malt vinegar, which was absolutely amazing. I love malt vinegar. You have a point. Somehow I don't think fish and chips is ever the same without malt vinegar. Not to be confused with white vinegar. And not to be confused with ketchup that everybody seems to serve. Fish and chips, malt vinegar, what a combo. The best combo. Yes. I had so much I was profusely sweating at lunch. (laughs) I didn't stop for about 30, 45 minutes, sweating all over the place, but it was delicious. Then we went to Cap Door. Cap Door. Everybody calls it Cape Door, but I think Samuel de Champlain was 
French, and therefore he would have called it Cap d'Or. Cap d'Or. And Cap d'Or is a peninsula, and it has a lighthouse on it with a foghorn, which does not work anymore. But you can stay there at their guest house, guest house which has a restaurant. It was lovely. We got to meet Darcy, who owns the property. Runs the entire place, runs the kitchen. Very, very nice guy. We got to watch a gorgeous sunset, see the lighthouse, have a nice dinner, and then the oh, four of us. A, and we went on a hike. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We went on a beautiful hike. We did some more geocaching, which was great. I feel really good right now that I never got attacked by black flies. I was like, I'm going to try to get through this trip without getting eaten alive. And on that hike, I was like, I'm going to get eaten alive for sure. We didn't. Nothing. Not, not a single bite. So we had fun at Capdor. We did. We made a huge bonfire at night and we told stories and it was awesome. And we... Drank more Tidal Bay. Yes, we did. And we drank more of Thor's beer, homemade beer. Yeah. It was a really nice night. We had other guests that were staying with us as well from New Jersey. We woke up again late. This time, Debbie and Thor woke up late as well. So Jamie and I didn't have to feel so bad about it. When we did get up and out, we went to wild caraway it was in advocate harbor and apparently we had been hearing about this restaurant favorite place in nova scotia to eat not name dropping or anything but matt damon and of all the food we ate there i would just like to mention the rhubarb dessert because honestly yes everything was delicious but that rhubarb dessert the rhubarb blew my mind away the rhubarb soda as well, right. which was absolutely amazing. Never had rhubarb soda before, and it was delicious. Another thing they had was unsweetened iced tea. They had great smoked salmon, too. And their fresh bread. You had the lobster oh, roll. Oh, the lobster was... roll was amazing. The bread might have been the best bread that I've had in recent memory. I can't remember bread being that good, but it was delicious. It was sweet, and uh, the lobster was great. And inside of the rolls, they had... Uh, Dulce. They take the seaweed and dry it, and that they call dulse. We happened to be in Advocate Harbor during low tide. It was really neat. We got to see the boats on the ground. I've never seen so much floor. You've like never you, seen just, a it, tide out so far. There you go. I like that. Very well <laughs> said. Yeah, it's crazy. And we also learned that there's more water rushing out than all of the rivers in the world. The Bay of Fundy. Jamie and I did some good geocaching in Advocate Harbor as well. There's some good ones out there. But I gotta say to the geocaches around here, you know, a little more of a challenge. Come on. I'm just saying. Hide it better? Jamie likes a challenge. Like a challenge. That's why he's but my can anyone uh, start one? Anybody can start a geocache. Anybody. What do we do then? I we became obsessed with going to an antique shop. I think that was my only request for the day. So we rushed out. We didn't even stop at Apple River Provincial Park, which is awesome. So we kept rushing right back through Joggins. Didn't even stop at the Fossil Cliffs. And we headed straight for an antique shop. You guys recommended one called Flying Colors, which we tried to find on Google and couldn't. But I think it's because we didn't write the full name, which was Flying Colors Gallery and Retreat. But then we found Dale, who owns the place. So we're in the antique shop, we're looking around, and it's very 1930s-centric. And we're all looking, we're seeing great stuff, and we hear this booming rhythmic sound. It was just this boom, 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 boom. We're like, making pottery upstairs, of course. It's an art shop. And then the shop owner comes down and suggests that we go meet an artist upstairs. And we did. And up we go, and we met Barbara. Lemon, who is a shamanic artist who does art and is an environmentalist, and she is playing a drum in the middle of a room up on the second floor. And we just kind of took chairs and sat while she drummed. It was a little bit weird at first, but after a while, you looked around at her art and you realized this woman is talented. And we stayed, I think, for maybe an hour talking to her, her husband Charles, the shop owner looking at her art and really became immersed in it all and it was it was amazing it was and really she just amazing lives in pugwash now near pugwash oh that's cool and they have an art festival going on in june on that flyer that you had right for sometime in june they have a bunch of art stuff going on with a bunch of different all artists of all of june all of june uh, that'll be really cool to stop by there and then we wanted to go to another antique shop but it was closed 
we went into Pugwash then, right? It's Was Oxford. That? Oxford. Oxford. Okay. Too late. The blueberry capital of Canada. Blue nose. Blue, blue nose. nose. We saw the blue nose in Newfoundland. Do you remember that? Yes, we did. And um, Barbara Lemon had a piece of art called the Blue Buddha. Blue Buddha. <laughs> Look at all these connections. When you get on the blue color, things happen. Things happen. Then your fiance started driving us nuts with his obsession for more lobster. Lobster, lobster, yeah. lobster. And even though he had eaten a lobster roll at Margie's and even though he had eaten lobster at the Harbor View, he insisted on more lobster since he was only in Nova Scotia for a limited time. I have an insatiable desire for lobster. In fact, when I finished the lobster that we just had, I wished I got the four pound lobster. We went to Chase Lobster in Port Howe. Come on down. You're the next contestant because you can get lobster alive or frozen. Also fresh lobster rolls in a fridge. Debbie and I got a pound and a quarter. Pound and a quarter, yeah. And what did you guys get? We got bigger than that. Because <laughs> yeah. they're mint. All together as a family, boiled some water, added a little salt, dropped in our beautiful... Uh, new friends. New friends. From Chase's. From Chase's. And... Melted butter. Melted butter. Mmm. As I let Dad pay for the lobster at Chase's <laughs> Lobster, we went across the street to see Tess's awesome fish and chips what do you call that, cart? Uh, oh, chip truck. truck. Chip truck. We ran across the street to see Tess's awesome fish and chips chip truck and ordered my final poutine for my visit, which had curd cheese. <laughs> Big difference. It was the best poutine I've had in Nova Scotia since I got here. And as the poutine connoisseur, I'd like to give it my vote. Back yes. to Chase's Lobster in our home kitchen. It was amazing. We boiled it. We b melted the butter. And now I got to drive you back to Halifax. Vanessa, Jamie, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Thanks for, having, for having, us. having us. Yes, thank you. We enjoyed your, your visit. We loved exploring your neighborhood. The neighborhood was great. Let's do it again. Okay, time has run out. If you'd like to contact us, our email is scotiaheritageproductions at gmail.com. When it comes to local business, arts, crafts, and entertainment, We'll try our best to provide a global perspective on our community and remind listeners that where one regularly chooses to spend their money is often much more powerful than the occasional vote at the ballot box. So, help out your talented neighbors and enjoy the unique diversity of what Cumberland, Westmoreland has to offer. And ultimately, you'll be helping yourself. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Exploring the Neighborhood is sponsored by our friends at Kanza. So, tune in next week for another episode of Exploring the Neighborhood with your hosts, Thor and Debbie, here on CICR 99.1 on your FM dial. <laughs>